Yeah, I, I don't see any team on the attendee side. I don't either. Do you think perhaps it's the first one under attendees, the M. Mohammed? No, that's the coach. That's the person we've been chatting with. I think there's a second. Because um, he's also in the panelist, right? Okay, yeah, I think I've said. Well, I think there seems to be something, a little trouble, a lag in updating the panelists and attendees. Yes. Yeah, sometimes when we bring them over and then they drop off, they there's like a ghost for a moment. Right. Well, uh, it's been more than a moment, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, it has. He's still listed as attendees, even though he's showing up in the panelists. Yes. Hmm. I'm not seeing. Like, I don't see him on my panelist list. No, I don't either. But he's on the attendees list. Right. And I see at least his picture uh, on the panelist screen. So yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that means he was allowed to be a panelist. Well, uh, or, or he accepted. Well, that's yeah. interesting because he's on both of mine so oh really yeah yeah both lists yeah panelist and attendee hmm. <laughs> oh the zoom Take it's love great zoom. great when it works for sure <laughs> All right, we are live on Facebook. So thank you everyone for joining us if you're seeing us there. We're trying to get one last team logged in. We are waiting for them to uh, get connected to the Zoom webinar. Teams in Morocco. So hopeful that we will be able to get them logged in. Hope it's not too many technical issues. Uh, for everyone on the attendee side, thank you so much for joining us. We will update the team list in the presentation that we save online. So um, right now the, the team list is a bit uh, different from what, you, what we've been posting. So right now I'm going to Okay, just take a screenshot for the judges um, and, and upload that right now. Um, and if it changes, we'll, we'll let them know again too. So let me just. All right, Jan, can you put that in the presentation? Because I wanted to review that before we start the. Yes. Just so teams um, confirm their order. Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, I was gonna send it out to everybody too. So let me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, uh, I still don't see this other team. Yeah. So. Uh, if we're not able to connect the teams, well, we're gonna have to work, we can work out some other way to, uh, for them to present perhaps a, a video submission. Okay, so I've updated the team list in the presentation. It's got the, the, the scratch teams in there still as yeah. well. I'd like to update that eventually to remove those teams. Just for now, that's how it looks. 
Um, so in the chat, I'm also going to um, paste the um, the team list for right now, so the judges have it, as well as the teams. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> Did everyone get the team list? Does that look okay? And is it viewable? <laughs> okay, good. I got it. Perfect. Okay, thank you again for those of you waiting on Facebook Live or on the attendee site. We are waiting for a team to get connected to the webinar. They're located in Morocco, so we get to see their incredible project too. Um, as Elmer mentioned, if there is still an issue with connectivity, we will work with the team to make sure that they are judged really with all the other teams. Uh, we will give them a chance to either submit a video or we will reschedule a time, maybe even after the end of this event, them to get uh, presentation completed. I know they probably worked very hard in our just as frustrated as I could imagine they could be. So anyway, that's, um, if the judges would turn on their videos for the presentation, because um, anybody with the video on is showing in Facebook Live, if your video is off, you're, you're not. So we'd like to see the judges. Um, and then we will also be asking all the teams to turn on their videos at uh, at, a, at a different time in the presentation to uh, take a group photo. So again, welcome everyone. Do we have everybody still here is my question. What's the question? Well, it looks like there's just, I'm, it just doesn't, doesn't look like a lot of, a lot of thumbnails, but because Hong Kong, are, the three teams are together and the two Macau teams are together. It just seems smaller than it is. There's actually many more teams than, our, than thumbnails. So I just wanted to make sure we didn't lose anyone um, throughout this uh, waiting period. So uh, it looks like the um, firefighters mobile cam has, um, has disappeared from the attendees side. So hopefully they can log back in and use their name um, as we had provided before. So um, we'll get started in like two minutes. The opening, so we're about 15 minutes behind, but we have lost a few teams. So it, we will still be ending at the same time. Um, so again, thank you. Uh, Elmer, when you are ready to go, um, you can go ahead and 
start the presentation and the okay. recording. make sure you start the recording, please. Okay, recording started. Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to the RoboFest Online World Championship Exhibition Event for the Junior Division. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome spectators. Uh, we invite you to join the um, ROWC events via Zoom webinar. This gives you the ability to participate in the webinar Q&A function and the quality is also better. So if you've joined us via Facebook Live and would like to switch, uh, you can get the link in a recent post. Any questions um, can be asked to the teams in the webinar function, and then we will, um, at the end of today's event, we will summarize them and then send them out to the teams, and then teams will uh, answer and judges will use the answers in their final considerations. Thank you so much, teams, for checking in. RoboFest is a program of Lawrence Technological University. And at this point, we have a welcome video from the um, president of Lawrence Tech. Warm greetings and good health to the world from RoboFest and Lawrence Technological University. Welcome to the RoboFest 2021 Online World Championship. I am Virendra Mordgill, President and CEO of Lawrence Technological University in Southfield, Michigan, USA. STEM education, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and computer science, are the focus of RoboFest competitions. Students are challenged to integrate problem solving, teamwork, creativity, communication, and the arts into projects. Success at RoboFest requires mastery of multiple STEM and computer science subjects, which in turn drives preparation for college, classes, and high-tech careers. We learned last year during the complete shutdown of in-person competitions due to the coronavirus pandemic that we all could successfully conduct a competition-based learning environment completely online. This year, our 22nd Overfest season, there are a variety of online, in-person and hybrid competitions based on the conditions on ground in each community. We will all continue to learn, adapt, and deliver LTU RoboFest competitions for many seasons to come. I commend all the participants, teams, students here, being active learners and pioneers who are eager to master technologies for the future. Thank you for your participation in this competition. Lawrence Technological University as you may know, was founded in 1932 with the support of automotive pioneer Henry Ford. At that time, Ford's famous Model T factory was at the forefront of an industrial revolution that changed the world. Likewise, we are at such a forefront of new technologies such as artificial intelligence and autonomous vehicles. Lawrence Technological University and RoboFest are paving the way. Someday, I hope you will join us here at Lawrence Tech to continue to do the excellent work you are already doing through LTU's RoboFest competition. Your efforts are advancing science and technology for solving real world problems. There are many people who make RoboFest possible. I would like to thank them all, the teachers, 
the coaches, mentors, parents, volunteers, location judges, LTU judges, site hosts, and all the inspirational international directors who have organized local qualifying competitions or are sending teams here to Ro RoboFest 2021 online championship. In closing, I wish all of you luck with your endeavors today and hope you have a great learning and collaboration experience through the online RoboFest 2021 World Championship competition. Okay, thank you. And once again, thank you to Lawrence Technological University for their support. Also, thank you to all of RoboFest 2021 sponsors. Thank you so much for your support. These competitions would not be possible without it. RoboFest exhibition is one of a series of World Championship competitions this year. Please join us for uh, our other competitions in the upcoming weeks, Bottle Sumo Time Trial and Game. My name is Elmer Santos. I am the uh, RoboFest Assistant Director and also the uh, Chairperson for uh, the exhibition events. Also with us today are uh, Dr. Christopher Cartwright, Director of RoboFest, Shannon Polonis, RoboFest Coordinator, Pam Sparks, RoboFest coordinator, and Dr. CJ Chung, uh, the founder uh, of RoboFest. Welcome to our teams. Thank you so much for your hard work. We know there have been some technical difficulties, um, but welcome. Uh, this is the order we're gonna uh, do, uh, present today. Please take note of where you are in the order. Um, there are a couple of teams that, um, we're having trouble getting onto the uh, webinar. Uh, we'll try our best to do that. Um, if not, we'll, we'll work out another way and contact the coach and find another way for them to present um, afterwards. So thank you teams. Next up, well, we would like to welcome our judges. Um, their information is available on our um, the RoboFest website. Uh, and on the uh, world championship page, but at this point, um, we'd like to welcome our judges and give them a chance to introduce themselves. Let's start with Wu Ming Ching. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Wu Ming. Uh, I'm working at the faculty here at Lawrence Tech. Uh, I was working in the mechatronics and the robotics program. So. Uh, uh, welcome here and uh, looking forward to see your uh, interesting and exciting projects. Have a good one. Next, we'll have John Resner. Hello, everybody. I'm John Resner. I've been a long time RoboFest judge. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for everybody. Good luck. Thank you, John. Next, we'll have uh, Emma. Good morning, everyone. I'm Emma Alaba, and I am the director and site organizer for Florida here in Tampa Bay. And I've been doing robotics since 1997. So I've been playing with Legos for a long time, and I'm still enjoying it. So good luck, everyone. And most importantly, have fun, because I am having fun. Thank you, Emma. Next, so we would like uh, Roxanne. Hello, my name is, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hello, my name is Roxanne Resner. I've been working in computer technology for decades. I started with Emma Alaba and her efforts in Florida and I'm grateful to be here. Thank you everyone, have a good day. Thank you. All right, thank you so much judges. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Hope you enjoy the, uh, the projects. Okay, next, I would just like to briefly um, review the process. Um, teams were required to provide video as well as um, their source code. And then judges uh, take a look at this source code 
uh, ahead of the competition and then also afterwards. Also, there is a code inspector that uh, will look at the code in detail and then recommend points for programming. Judges uh, have been selected by Lawrence Technological University uh, RoboFest office and their bios are available on our webpage. At this competition, um, we will give the microphone to each team and then each team will have four minutes to demonstrate um, their robots. Judges will then have two minutes to um, ask questions. Teams must use English for all communications. Judges questions may be translated at the local level when teams do not understand. However, uh, teams must answer directly in English. Judges may also ask additional questions by email to teams within 24 hours. Teams must answer um, within 24 hours after the uh, receiving the questions. Okay, at this point, I think it's time for the uh, group photo. I think we just got a team from Saudi Arabia just joined. Okay. Yes, they were working to get um, logged in. So we'll promote them to panelists. We'll give them a chance to turn on their video. Um, if you wanna do a quick sound check and check in, we can do that right now too while we're doing the photo. If everyone mind waiting just a few moments. So Hero and um, Dina, not team, if we just do a quick check. Okay, so we're waiting for videos from Hero. If you could turn on your profile picture and our newly arrived Morocco team. No, nope, they're from Saudi Arabia. The Med oh. <laughs> Hero is Morocco <laughs> and uh, Medina Banat is from Saudi Arabia. Okay. All right. And they are, they are, I'm so sorry, they, Somehow the link to the webinar did not get to the coach properly. So I do apologize for that. We will give them a moment to, they're probably needing a good deep breath. <laughs> so Hero and uh, Medina Banat, can you turn on your video? We will do. We we can wait on the check-in if you just want to take your uh, video so we can get a nice group photo. Oh, teams are looking good. Thanks, oh everybody. Gosh, how great is this? From all over the world. Oh, there we go. Yay, Hero's on. Hi, welcome. Hi. I'm so sorry for the technical problems you were having. I'm glad okay, you're glad we have them on, though. Excellent. Absolutely. Okay, three, two. Hold on, hold on. Medina Banat, oh, all we see is a okay. robot. We want to see people's faces if we can. Uh, please, can you repeat the question because I don't understand? We are right now taking a group photo. So uh, okay. team, uh, there, there we go. There we go. Just waiting oh, for one other that. team to get into the frame so we could see a person and not just the robot. So I think yeah. we are all I think we're good. We're good. Okay, we're gonna take a couple. Three, two, one, smile. Okay. Okay, we're ready to go. So three, two, one, everybody say RoboFest. Three, two, one, RoboFest. RoboFest. Robo All right, fantastic. Okay. Well, yeah, um, at the very end, we're gonna do one more with uh, including the audience, just to uh, give you guys a heads up. <laughs> well, let's do a quick sound check for Medina Banat. Let's okay, sure. Make sure we can, you wanna turn on and let's give us a, uh, hello and make sure we can hear you. Uh, we are engineers. Okay. Perfect, we can hear you well, thank you so much. All right. Okay, I think it's time for the uh, moments you've been waiting for. We're gonna start the uh, actual exhibition projects.
All right, Dom. So Shannon, can you explain how this is going to work? Absolutely. Um, what happens now? <clears throat> um, the team order. I'm going to send it again because um, the two teams that came in um, might not be able to see the chat. So going in the order that we're going to um, uh, send out, each team will be brought in um, so we'll, we'll bring in the team one at a time. So the first team is RIHK exhibition from Robo, Robot Institute of Hong Kong. So the team order has just been sent again in the chat. So, um, so right now I'm going to move all the other teams back to the panelist side. So the first, the, the team that we're leaving right now here is 2864-1, which is one of the Hong Kong teams. So all the other teams we're going to move back to the, the panelist side, or I'm sorry, the attendee side. So when it's your turn, we'll bring you back in and we'll get your, your video turned back on again. Um, so, Chris, if you want to start at the top, I'll be working from the bottom. Okay. Although we're assuming that our list is the same order. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, one more group go to the overs. Okay, I think we're Macau teams are going to attendee. Okay, I think we're there. So the first Hong Kong team is 2864-1. And when the team is ready to start their yeah, presentation. Yeah, we need the timer, right? Yep, I got the timer ready to go. Turn the video on. Okay, good. Yeah. And so when the team is ready, I'll, I'll, you know, make sure that you're ready to go. And then we will, I'll give you a three, two, one, go, and you can start and I will start the four minute timer. If you are looking like you're wrapping up you your presen yes. presentations, um, yes. I won't stop you, but if you're going super long, I will ask you to can stop. You hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, and then we will start the two minute timer for the judges questions and judges go ahead and just start when you're ready to ask questions. We have a hand up in the attendee side. Let me see what that's about. Um, Um, Medina, Bennett, can you put your question, if you have a question in the chat and we can address that with you? Yes, we are, we are, you, you are checked in. Um, renamed the team number to 4182 so we can identify you. Thank you very much. Um, right now, all the teams except for the first team presenting um, is in the attendee side. So when it's your turn to present, uh, we'll bring you back in as a panelist. So right now you're basically in the audience watching the team that's presenting. So one team at a time will be on the, the screen. So everybody else is in the in the, the seats as it were. So um, RAHK exhibition, are you ready to start? Yes, yes. Okay, and I'm gonna start the timer in three, two, one, go. Hello, judges. I'm Herman. I'm Carter. I'm Marcus. I'm Alex. We're from Hong Kong RHK team 2864-1. Our robot is named Madbot. The Madbot's functions are intended to help the elderly in elderly's home and reduce the workload from the sphere. The Madbot syncs with a web interface, which can be accessed by the family members of the elderly via the internet. The world population is aging over time, and according to the United Nations, it is projected that by the year 2050, there will be 1 in 6 people in the world over the age of 65. There will be an increased demand for carers to take care of elderly. This is the 
front page of the robot's web system. It's a graph to show the most recent body temperature measurements, and also it's a chart to show the coming events in this point in time. This is the temperature record page. In this page, the elderly's family can have access to the temperature records and set specific times for checking the temperature. For example, for setting the time to the current hour in Hong Kong, which is six, which is eight p.m. Once the function is activated, the server was hand raises. When the ultrasonic sensor detects the elderly's body in close proximity, the P degrees the temperature. The new temperature is then recorded in our system. This is the medicine distance schedule page. In this page, the elderly family can set the time and amount of the medicine to dispense. For example, we're setting it to distribute one red and one yellow pills now. The MedBot is a feature that can know if the elderly took the medicine or not. Equipped with a color sensor, it can detect a hand, which means the elderly has put their hand into the tray and has taken the medicine. Now we are going to introduce the medicine dispensing mechanism. The mechanism can set and dispense one pill at a time accurately. The pills are set vertically in four cylinders. The one gear is fixed to the model, so it cannot rotate. Instead, it acts like a common red gear transmission, which moves a selector left and right. When the selector is at the bottom of a cylinder, the bottom pill drops into the selector. The selector then moves back to the setting position and the pill drops into an opening and down the slide to the tray in front of the robot. The emergency button features allow the elderly to press the button. For example, when he or she is not feeling well, and an alert coming with an alarm will sound and display on the dashboard. Now, we are going to introduce our robot's communication system. We have designed a command scheme to standardize communication between all of our different hardware running different programs. Our robot's electronics are controlled by TVBP P-Bricks. The P-Bricks use our robot's tablet to connect to the server on the internet using Wi-Fi. Our EVV period periodically carries our server to see if there are any tasks needed to be done with the C0000 command. Our server looks at the schedule set by the user from the database and replies to the robot the tasks that are due to be performed. After the task is done, the robot will report to the server that the task is done. For example, to report temperature, a robot uses the T1234 command, where 1234 is the temperature in degrees times 100. So our programs do not need to handle decimal points and communications between components. The M0000 command is used to report that the poles are removed from the tray. And for triggering a safety valve, the B0000 command is used to set off the safety valve. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening. Nicely done. Judges, we are open for questions. How many did you have a question? Yes. What inspired you all to do the project on the Asian population? We believe that uh, the aging population is a growing is a growing problem to to the uh, to the future as the as the population aging and the population increasing will will slowly but surely bring a bring a burden to the to the workers and nurses and the elderly public. This is why we decided to to do to do this part. Do you have aging par parents who are in that group? Or are they actually grandparents? Okay. Pardon? Uh, can you... Do you have a grandpa or grandma taking like a regular pills? <laughs> uh, uh, our, yes. Yeah. So we just like design this uh, robot to uh, improve the quality. Improve the quality. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, improve the quality. I do have one question. So a um, very nice uh, system. I do uh, notice you have even have you know web and data server. Can you uh, explain that? What's that a little bit? 
do you use some online service or what's the data server about? Uh -huh. Pardon, can you, can you yeah, I noticed in your system, right? You got Arduino, you got a, a EV3, you got a, all this robot, right? You even got a data and a web server. So can you explain that part a little bit? Can you explain your uh, network server or data uh, server? So basically our uh, uh, web server, it, uh, basically we, basically it's, it's like a network between the the tablets with the Python that's running the Python program to the web uh, to the web server. So basically, so basically, it's it's like and like and like relays the information to the web server. Yeah, that's, thank uh, you. Thirty two mm -hmm. EVP PVX are uh, there are two EVP PVX the Arduino module. The two EVP PVX uh, use the Arduino module as a bridge to the. Uh, to connect to the tablet that's running the Python program, and then the Python program uh, connects to the web and database server via the internet. Yeah, thank you. Well, very nice. Thank you very much. At this time, we will bring in Team Thirty Six Forty One, Firefighter. They have two cameras. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, they have two cameras. Yes, they have two cameras. Yes. Okay. Do they reset the timer? Are you ready to start? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, you may start your presentation. Three. Two, one, go. Good morning, We are firefighters. In this year, many forest fire from around the world. There were many casualties, especially for firefighters. You were the very important of firefighters' death. Oh, 1960 in 2020 is very sad. So we want to make a firefighting robot to help put out a fire, and it can keep firefighters safe. We use two brand sensors to stick a fire. One is put on the nozzle, and the other is there. The four wheel are called mechanics wheel. They have a robot mode in all directions. We use them to put out the fire, so we put the baking soda to create powder, and the water is in the bottle. We have tested many formula ratios. 100 grams of the bulk powder are the best. We use ATP inventor to write an app on our cell phone. The arrow button shows the direction. Let me show you. When we press forward, the robot go forward. When we press backward, the robot go backward. And so on like left, right, left, then right, then left. The sensor button can read the value of the sensor like this. Zero is no fire, 100 is a big fire, and the one just had a fire, but it is small. Moreover, the command auto, it can put out a fire automatically. Let's show you. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Yeah. This many execution by facial recognition when we set execution the robot put out a fire automatically like this. means put out a fire. Tell me, tell me, yay! Yeah, 
when we say no extinguisher, the robot start put out a fire. The robot also can put out a fire by remote control. When I press the extinguisher, the nozzle can spray CO2 normal fire sensor. It's stuck like this. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Yay, don't have to hurry. Let me show you our programming. When we press speed is speed, speed is sent to a Google Cloud. Then the action is sent back to app. And the robot is well stopped. The other is extinguishing automatically. It is very hard to us. The robot will start to set the fire to the right side for some time and to the left side. A robot will stop if no fire. If the robot sees the fire, the NASA can spray CO2 to no fire. Thank you all so much for your listening. Nicely done, gentlemen. Judges, are there any questions? So, uh, have you learned any uh, interesting knowledge when you're developing this kind of, you know, autonomous vehicles? Or uh, do you learn some, you know, the real difficulty when a real firefighter, when they're fighting? So when you're developing your future autonomous, autonomous firefighter, um, what is, uh, you know, the most uh, challenging or do you feel what's the most difficult part? Yeah, very good answer. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I also got friends that are working in uh, firefighter. They're saying, you know, uh, the danger is usually coming very fast. The problem for uh, cause the real firefighter in danger. It's uh, they don't know where the danger and the fire is, right? <laughs> yeah, good work. <laughs> do either of the other judges have any questions? You, if you do have a question after the time is up, um, we will for questions to the teams. So if you want to ask a question and you don't have time, um, you can go ahead and send Elmer an email with the question and he will forward it to the team to get an answer. So if there are no further questions, to move out to uh, the firefighter team and the next team to present will be the Aerobots inventors. Are you ready to start? Okay. Go ahead and start in three, two, one, go. Good morning. We are Arabots Inventors from Toluca, Mexico. Our ID is 3728.1. 
Hello, I am Brian. Hi, I am Mia. Hello, I am Emiliano. And we, and we represent all about robotics school. We are happy to tell you about our project in Telepod. We are going to use our web page as a presentation. So let's first understand for the problem. If you want that your plant have good conditions, you have to control these three factors, water, light, and temperature. If you don't control correctly these three factors, your plant is going to die. But if you control correctly, your plant is going to be in good conditions. There are three types of plants that are shadow, sun, and half shadow. It's important to understand the differences so we can take care of them in a correct way. Intellipot has three sensors are temperature, light, the humidity and the water pump. Let's go to the front of the panel. Well, this is the front of the panel. At the right, you can see the indicator for the sensor and the water pump. And in the left, and in the left, you can see the status of the plants and the message board. And um, well, like you can see the plant is in good conditions. Now we're going to simulate if our plant is in a place with high temperature and low humidity of the soil. Now, as you can see, the, the mesa changes and the water pump activates. This happens because if the temperature is high, the plant and the soil need more water. Now, we, now if we more water is what needs an other alert messages a date. These are the materials, a plant, a 3D printer, the Arduino, the temperature sensor, the humidity sensor, the photoresistor, the motor controller, the water pump, the power source, and what view. This is the connection, the connection driver diagram. At the between, you could you have the Arduino. At the right, you have the water pump, and in the left, and in the left, you can you have the sensor. This is the IntelliPod 3D model. This is the 3D printing that we do in PLE. And this is the power source and the water pump. The program we did in LabVIEW and we use links to control the Arduino. The program is divided in three parts. The part one is the declaration ports. The part two is the sensors part. And the part three, is the case for is the case selector. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please ask us. Do you have any questions? Sergeant, do you have any questions? Folks, uh, very nice work. But uh, I do have uh, one uh, question. So uh, do you guys all work uh, alone by yourself on the, on the software part? For example, like you're using LabVIEW and SolidWorks. Um, that, that is kind of big software. <laughs> um, yeah, we work this alone, uh, but the, the program was too difficult. We come here a, a lot of hours to know all the programs. So is your uh, so is your schools uh, I mean um, middle school do does provide the license to the software right? Yes. Uh, right. Yes. <laughs> Another question. <laughs> <coughs> I have one. Was your project inspired by climate control? Can our coach translate us? Please? Well, uh, yeah, we're interested in that. 
And because of the plants, because uh, well, a lot of persons don't know how to take care of the plants and they end dying. That cause the extinction of some plants too. Yes, for, for that we create this, this project in Helipa. So it can be used on a larger scale. Yes. yes. Okay, good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a, um, another question? If we have any additional questions, we will forward them to the team. Thank you very much. My question is, when can I buy one? All my plants have died because I forget to water them. <laughs> uh, well, uh, now it is in sale. Right. Uh, but... That was kind of a joke, but yes, I, I look uh, forward okay. to seeing this in the marketplace very soon. Very <laughs> soon. I love this idea. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, the next group, uh, team is uh, STEAM Fund for Kids 2928-1. And as Tanae comes over and gets his video turned on. Just give me a second, please. You got it? <clears throat> I need to reset the timer. When you are ready, just give me a, a I'm ready, kind of. Okay. All right. Yep, you I'm ready. Your presentation in three, two, one, go. Hi, my name is Sinead Ponder, seventh grade from Clayton Middle School, and my project is an IoT-based approach for environmental monitoring and performance prediction of a microbial fuel cell using machine learning. National Renewable Energy Labs estimates that up to 90% of energy would be renewable by 2050. The problem is accurate performance prediction and the lack of self-sustaining IoT devices that can do environmental monitoring. My solution is a system that harvests renewable energy through microbes in a microbial fuel cell. The data is stored in Google Firebase, which is retrieved from an app I made through MIT App Inventor. And machine learning is used to provide more accurate forecasting of electricity generated. Let's see a demo in action. The microbial fuel cell consists of two chambers, two aluminum electrodes, copper wire, an air pump in the back, water, sludge, and a salt bridge. The microbes break down organic matter in sludge chamber to produce electrons through oxidation. Then they give their electrons to oxygen molecules in exchange for energy. When these electrons flow from the anode to the cathode, they generate the current and voltage needed to make electricity. The IoT system consists of an Arduino Uno Wi-Fi and has a water sensor that measures water level, a DHT11 module that measures temperature and humidity, and an analog pin on the Arduino board to measure the voltage produced by the microbial fuel cell. The power for the IoT device comes from a solar power bank, which makes the system self-sustaining. These values help in remote monitoring of the environment. The sensor values are stored in the cloud using the internet. When you click on this Android app, it shows the sensor values right here. This is the web page from the Arduino Uno Wi-Fi. You can see here it reads the values from the Arduino Uno Wi-Fi and displays it on this web page. So currently the temperature is 23 degrees Celsius, the humidity is 57%, the water level is 542, and the voltage generated is 1.05 volts. Here is the Firebase where the data is being stored. You can currently see here the data is being stored and it can be, it can be exported into CSV files for machine learning analysis. Here's the MIT App Inventor code. First, we initialize any necessary variables. We set the labels to getting data. We start, we get the data from the web page. We set the, uh, the sensor variables to the, to the values in the web page. We set the labels to the variables. And then we add the voltage values to the Firebase. I have several years of programming experience, so I created a machine learning program that can do that can predict future values and determine any unusual values the Arduino Uno Wi-Fi predicted. So what is the ARIMA algorithm? It is also known as the autoregressive integrated moving average. It is used to create, train, and apply training models for time series analysis. When applied, it can predict possible data in the future. 
and I applied this using Python via Jupyter Notebook. Here are the results from the machine learning prediction model. You can see in the left graph, which, which shows the average voltage generated for five months. And the right graph shows the test results after training and applying the training model. The blue line represents the actual data, while the red line represents the, training, the prediction data. Let me show you the machine learning code. First, we import in any necessary libraries. We read the CSV file and we plot the voltage graph. Then we import the ARIMA libraries. We divide the data into training and testing, and we initialize the variables for machine learning. We create, train, forecast the next values, and then add that uh, forecast to a list of predictions. From there, we evaluate the RMSE, or known as uh, root mean square error. You can see here the root mean square error is very low, so that indicates that the machine learning program is very accurate. And we plot this on this graph right here. Let me show you the Arduino code. First, we, we import any necessary libraries. We set the SSID and password. We um, initialize the sensors and Wi-Fi connection. Then we initialize the HTTP connection. We process the sensor values Thank and you. we display them on the web page. Thank you. Any questions? Also go blue. <laughs> yeah, I've got a question. Um, why did you choose a microbial fuel cell? Why are you so interested in that? Well, I feel like microbial fuel cells are one of the most, I think um, a lot of places um, around the world, they don't have proper um, money and proper budgets to be making um, solar panels. And I think that microbial fuel cells are a great alternative because they it's basically just mud. Mm -hmm. And then from that, we could just harvest the microbes because microbes are everywhere. And I think it's that's why, that's why it's really powerful. And even though it might not generate enough voltage, if we make enough of these, I feel like they can generate a lot of voltage. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I do have one. So um, is this um, Python code and all this um, machine learning idea you have learned in your school already? Oh, no, I, I do this in my spare time, essentially. Like I go through tutorials and stuff like that. Um, school doesn't teach me that, but um, school has teach, taught me um, the basics of Python and um, including object-oriented programming and a lot of great fundamentals. Cool. So you mentioned you have like five months data. Is that real or you just uh, use some data from elsewhere? Uh, yeah, that's real data. Five months. Um, over a period of five months, I collected those data. Oh, okay. Wow. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. All right. If we have I any have additional question. questions, we will. Yes. One oh, question. Do you right. find it, uh, have you find it difficult to actually have someone to work with you as a team member? You started um, out as a team member and then eventually you evolved to Uno? Usually, I'm sorry. Um, usually two brains are bigger than one brain. Like a team is great, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I just found it easier to do it by myself instead of coordinating with other people. But I would love to uh, have another team member in the future for RoboFest. Great job. Very nicely done. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. The next team we have coming in to present is Team Hero from Morocco. Let them get moved over. <clears throat> Are you ready to start? 
Yes. I will start the timer. You have four minutes. Three, two, one, go. Uh, hi, my name is Hamouti Mohamed Bilal uh, from Hero Team, led by Coach Mohamed Hassan Abdullah. Uh, I'm from Morocco. I'm 10 years old and I study uh, at the second grade of the middle school. Uh, and first of all, I would like to say uh, that I'm not, a, uh, I don't speak English very well because I am just a beginner. Uh, and my project is a device that controls computers, telephones, and tablets, as well as other electronic parts. Uh, this device makes them control the computer in an easy way and gives them the ability of writing and controlling applications. And they can, and they can also communicate with friends and loved ones, uh, as well as enabling them controlling uh, smart homes, such as uh, turning on lights, controlling electronic doors, uh, televisions, and applications. Uh, and they can study easily and do any work that related to computer, and they can uh, uh, control wheelchairs of people with special needs. And in this device, I used uh, Arduino Nano Sheet and uh, gyroscope sensor in PU 1615, uh, four relays, and the electronic piece that's located in the keyboard. Now I will try this device. Uh, here I use two buttons to click. Time is up.
Judges, while he's still demonstrating, would you like to ask questions so we can, he can continue the demo and he can also perhaps answer questions at the same time? Judges, are there any questions? Hello, maybe I'm missing the part. So what's the motivation to having this, uh, having to design this uh, smart device? Uh, sorry, I don't un understand the question. Yeah, so the my question is, uh, what is uh, the motivation? So uh, do you see any difficulty or what's the reason uh, you are having this uh, smart device? It's very interesting. Uh, actually, I don't. Uh, I don't know how to uh, to answer uh, in English. In English. We could uh, forward the questions in writing, and then you could have them translated. Would that be okay, judges? Yes, uh, definitely. That works for me. Uh -huh. Okay, we will email your coach the questions, and then you can have them translated and then please answer them back in English, um, or have someone help you translate them into English, please. Uh, this is a very interesting presentation. Thank you very much. So we will forward questions to you um, in, in, uh, in, in within a few hours, okay? Okay, thank you so much. And I am so sorry. And good luck to everyone. Oh, thank you. What a great, great uh, sentiment. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Next up, we have team 3342-1, LCKPS robot team from Hong Kong. We'll promote them in. Team ready to present? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I will reset the timer and you may begin your presentation. Three, two, one, go. Uh, we are from No Trump One Lutheran Primary School in Hong Kong. I'm Zhang Ji Yu. I'm Lao Chong Yu. I'm Yao Ting Han. I'm Fu Yang Yan. We are going to introduce our product, the Smart Guider. According to some report in Inland, there will be more and more people with visual impairment. Visual impairment. We call them PVI in the world. Most of them are old people with medical problems. They need to take pills frequently. So we decided to smart gather to help them in walking safely and taking pills on time. First, I'm going to tell you more about the smart guider. The smart guider has different parts, such as two mini computers and some different sensors. When we were creating the smart guider, we used some special skills. First, for the coding part, we used daisy chain mode and my block function. For daisy chain mode, this makes it more reliable to connect two mini computers. For, for my block function, we can put all the codes together systematically. Then, we also use 3D printing technology to print out the four pill boxes. Now, I'm going to show you how to use the smart guider. The smart guider will start and move 
to detect the optical within 20 centimeters. Then the ultrasonic sensor will turn left in 20, 15 degrees and turn right 100 degrees to find the safe way. After that, the mini computer will cast the distance and find the better way. And move again. If it's the time to take pills, we will use the music to greet and remind the PBI to take pills. And then the, uh, it, the smart guide will cast the time to take pills every 20 seconds. seconds. Finally, the PBI need to push the button of the first sensor. And the smart guide will release the first pill box. And finally, the PBI can take the pills from the pill box. In the future, we may use an AI system instead of the base step to confirm the identities of the PBI. Also, we can use the images identified functions of the AI system to find out the traffic light. It can tell the PBI to cross the road more safely. Thank you! Thank you. Judges, do you have any questions? I'm saying, uh, do you, uh, are you uh, together with the other Hong Kong team? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, you are most like uh, clear your uh, grandparents a lot. So um, I do have one question um, because you are so uh, little and cute. I do like your doggy design. So my question is, um, uh, can you see any uh, gap or difference you have similar products in, in future, right? You're, you have a car, you're going to PlayStation, you're going to hospital, or so what's, what's the... Uh, our car is the medicine box and the AI guided dog. It is two in one. Thank you. Maybe the question is uh, too hard. So. Um, so, um, have you um, developed all this, uh, do the fabrication and the programming by yourself uh, when yeah. you are building, building a toy? Okay. So, do, how much did you learn? I mean, did you learn any, like how the sensor works or can you, for example, can you explain the sensor, like detect and uh, how, how does it detect the, you know, where it goes, right? Can you explain a little bit? He knows more about the sensors and and the uh, mini computers and some uh, AI technology. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I would say very uh, very nice design. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Again, if there are any additional questions that you think of, judges, you can forward them to us and we will get them to the team for answering. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next team is uh, Railway Keeper 4052-2. I'm not finding them on the attendee side. Why is that? There they are. 
My apologies. It looks as if their second camera has. Is your second camera still online? Really? Yeah. I found it. They just got renamed. Okay, perfect. I tried to promote them. Okay. Okay. Let me know when you're ready to start. Okay. You ready? Do we need another camera? Okay. Hold on. I think it's I think it's there. Oh, I see it. Yep, I see it. I'm the translator. I see. Um, we need to turn off the cam the microphone on one of the devices because we are getting a bit of an echo, a second voice. Please turn off the microphone. Okay, is it done? Yeah. All right. Is it all right now? No. That's no. better. It's still a bit of an echo, but I think we still can. A little bit. Still echoing. Yeah, I think they have to I'm mute sorry. one of the um, cameras. Okay. Here, let's do that. Let's mute. Okay, just, just tapping, tapping. Is it better now? Yes. But okay. let's go ahead and mute the, the, the camera too. So we'll yeah. we'll mute. It's already off, right? Now. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready. ready. Okay. You like start in three, two, one, go. Good morning, judges and everyone. We are ready. And did you know about the terrible culture and crash caused for the death last April? The train did a train truck left leap from the hill. This is the big news. Everyone in Taiwan know about it. It is so sad. Is there any way we can do to prevent this from happening? Hmm. Oh, oh, we got, got it. it. We can use a computer vision on our projects. We can also use deep learning to improve its accuracy. Wow, you are genius. Let's tell you more about it. This is our AI Rollway Monitoring System. This is the Parallel Chain EV3 inside. We use a voice scan and recipe reply to detect. Anomalies the video will be sent to the recipe to be recognized. As you can see, the background image is at 100%. The car will be analyzed five times to make sure that the car. The label dots and the cost will be analyzed seven times. Let's show you. Now, we will detect the car. Please look at the screen. The accuracy rate is at 95%. And we analyze five times. Next, we detect label door. Please look at the screen. The accuracy rate is at 100%. And we analyze seven times. Next, we detect the car. Please look at the screen. The accuracy rate is at 90% and it analyzes seven times. Once confirmed, a message will, will be sent to the train using Bluetooth to keep our running and slow, then stop. Let's show you all. First, we test the how. Something wrong. We we try again. Please look at the train. The train stop. Next, we test the car. Please look at the train. The train is stuck. Let's we test the label door.
Please look at the train. The train is stuck. If there is not camera, we can use an ultrasonic sensor to help can detect and stop. Let's show you. You can see the train is stuck. Our program is written in Python. Here is the part that detects the object is a car, a cow, or a person. New light network is in Lane in CNS. This can do the background image. Try to show up the more clearly. Okay. We turn our AI model to using a thousand of the photos to improve this accuracy. We start with 400 photos, but the accuracy rate was too low. So we slowly increase photos to 1,000, and so the accuracy rate went higher and higher. It was gotten to 97% now. We, we, we believe it can bring well. Most importantly, it stays less. That's all our presentation. Thank you for your listening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you have any questions from the judges? Hmm. Go ahead, Emma. Yes. Very inter interesting project. What Thank area would this project be best used in? Like rural area, city, suburban? Translation. 你这个技术可以用在最适合用在什么地方？城市还是乡村？ City is city. city. Yes. Because city is more trend, a lot of trend. So city. <laughs> I know you will have a lot of constraints that will trigger this system, like animals, even in the city, <laughs> crossing the. The, the track and other things. So what, what kind of mechanism or control would you have in order to eliminate obstacles that are not really important to stop the train for? Oh. 你是用什么办法来确定要火车要停还是不要停? Um, we we drew the model a uh, very large photo. For example, a uh, car count if if eastern car if it eastern car count or person, he will think it is background and it isn't stop. Thank you. Good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next group to participate is Team 4144-1 from Macau. Promote them in. <clears throat> Are you ready to begin? Yes. Okay, resetting the timer to four minutes. You may begin three, two, one, go. Hello, I'm Rat. I'm from Macau. Here is my robot. Let me introduce about it. My robot is helping for disabled people. It helps disabled people washing their bodies. Disabled people feel embarrassing when someone helps help them to washing their bodies. So I made this robot when they are in nurse home or hospital or anyone who needs this. 
It has many functions. It can wash your hair, bodies. The clean function is very good. And it also can dry your bodies. I have this idea because, because one time I visited the earlier home. I see earlier have this goal to move. The nurse need to help to clean their bodies if they get dirty. So I have come up an idea that if I can improve, improve a robot like this, it would help disabled people a lot. I will use EV3 and Legos or some other material to make this robot. I will use a door instead of uh, uh, disabled people and sick people. And I use a machine card and swimming pool. Now I will demo it. and the fan will turn on to dry the body. Okay, now finish. Do you have any question to ask? Judges, are there any questions? Do you have any questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. Why did you decide to use a fan to dry them off? Because we the like EV free cannot use hot fan to dry the human body. So I will use fan to dry the human body. Okay, thank you. Any more? No. Any additional questions? No, right. then. We, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next team is Team Curious 4054. I'll bring them over. I think I grabbed the second team from uh, camera from Team Curious. Yes, it looks like they're. It is. Good, yeah. <laughs> All right, we need to turn off a speaker. On the second device. Let's try this again. Let's do a quick sound check. That's better, okay. Um, when you are ready to start, are you ready? Yes. Okay, you may go in three, two, one, go. 
Good night, judges, audience, and everyone. We are Team Curious. I'm Kevin. I'm Ella. I'm Eddie. In 2020, an outbreak of the terrifying virus black outbreak. That is COVID-19. COVID-19 is very infectious. Once you have met a person carrying the virus, there's a high probability for you to get infected. We also designed an anti-FDM robot and a mass picking up robot. The anti-FDM robot combines the functions of mass detection, alcohol screening, and medical material transportation. The mass pick up robot can pick up masks thrown on the ground to avoid direct contact with a used mask and further possible infection. Now let's introduce this to robot. Check it out. First, I want to introduce you the function of the NTFM robot. The NTFM robot has three functions. The first function is net detection. We use a base detection function in scripts, combined with a model we train with machine learning, and we can know whether a person is very net. There are three steps. The first step is to is to build a data model. We give it 50 photos of the mask and 50 photos without the mask. The second step is to train it and let it perform machine learning. The third step is to take a train model to scratch and use it. As you can see here, Kevin is demonstrating how the robot works. If the robot detects a human face, there will be a green rectangle mark the face shown on the screen. When the target is close enough, the robot will take a picture and do the analysis. If the person is wearing a mask, the robot's uh, the screen will say a uh, good job sign. And if the person is not wearing a mask, there will be a warning on the screen to remind you to put on a mask as soon as possible. The second function of the robot is spraying sanitizing alcohol. We use an ultrasonic sensor to detect. When the sensor senses a human hand approaching, the robot will spray some amount of alcohol. Take him and it's going to show how it works. Next, I'm going to introduce you the function of transportation. We use the light sensor to start the light and deliver the light to a designated place. While the robot is working, LED, LED lights are also used to simulate ultraviolet lines to mimic the extra functions of thermalizing the test passing by. Okay, the last thing I want to introduce is the mask picking up robot. We use the Bluetooth remote control to control it. Now let me show you. Thanks to everyone's efforts. We should wash our hands more often. Keep safe, distance, and wear a mask. So that the epidemic can come to an end sooner. Thanks for all for your listening. Thank you. Good job. Judges, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, you, your robot seems to have three parts. So did each of you contribute a uh, different idea to it? Uh, Oh, uh, Kevin has uh, the mass detection is uh, and uh, make the mass detections uh, somewhere. Uh, Kevin, uh, uh, Alan make the mass detection and the and Kevin make the transportation and uh, the part of transportation and alcohol spray. Uh, and I I make this robot and have and uh, yeah I make this robot and they uh, and they make this one. Okay, thank you.
Did you have a question? Yes. Did you uh, measure the accuracy of the, the detection for having a mass? Yes. Uh, uh, um, our. Um, here shows that how many per uh, percent have a. Uh, 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 now it's training and we have to wait a moment and we can take the train model and test. Uh, but we have a problem because the the um we can't use the we can't use the photo the camera because we are in the we are in the meeting. So we can't, like, uh, we can't do the test. I just wanted to know if you measured it. Yes, yes. We, uh, about 98%. Oh, good, good. Because of the different materials, that's the reason for asking the question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Time is up for questions. If we have any additional questions, we will email them to the team. Thank you, everyone. The next group we're going to bring in is Team 4154-1, Team GMT. They're coming over. Hello, judges. Nice to meet you. I am Ian Liu from Hong Kong. You use my program called Relax. Oh, sorry, we haven't stopped yet. Yes, yes. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're. I, pardon me. I, I was looking at some. Some of the other teams had gotten over by mistake. So. I will start the timer. You may go now. Hello, Jordan. Nice to meet you. I am Ida Liu from Hong Kong. Here is my program called Relax Time. I hope you enjoy my presentation and using my program. COVID-19 spread to Hong Kong since January last year. It gave us a lot of problems, such as it caused most of the outdoor activities being cancelled. People need to work from home and students need to take online lessons. These triggers made me to think of creating a computer app to overcome the stress by enjoying a game and allow people to work out at home. I used several technologies to develop the app, such as AR, video sensing, machine learning, and also image recognition. Let me do the demo. Hope you enjoy it. Please wait for a few seconds. There's a connection problem. Okay, now I'm in the program called Rest Time. As I said, this program has game and exercises. When you play the games, it reminds you how to prevent COVID-19. But today, I'm focusing on the technologies that are used in the exercises. Now, I'll introduce the exercise called stretching. When you click the button, you should see a dog do exercise in the middle of the screen, and you should follow it to do exercise. I use a technology called video sensing to detect emotion. If you follow the dog, one point will be added to the energy bar. Otherwise, 
if you do other motion, this will never count. Okay, now I'll introduce another exercise I made called football match. And I used several technologies to develop the game, such as machine learning. The computer camera is a video sensor. I think so that different color of card I hope represents different location the goalkeeper has to move to. Such as blue card represents the goalkeeper has to move to the left upper corner of the football net. And pink card represents the goalkeeper needs to go to the right upper corner. Can you see it? Okay, now I will try to play the game. Oh, this time I failed to catch it. This time I got it. Okay. I found out that this is not really accurate. So I used another technology called image recognition to improve the detection. And I used this technology to sense the position of my hand and instructs the goalkeeper to follow the position of my hand to catch the football. Let me try to play the game again. This time I can catch the ball. Now I will try that not catching the ball. Can you see it? This is the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Judges, do you have any questions? What is a cute idea? I, I do have one. Uh, have you played any like a Nintendo, uh, the console player, uh, the video game? Like playing a sports game? Do you inspired by that? <laughs> No, I'm just, I have this idea because I usually do jumping jacks and I found out that moving your hand uh, is an uh, exercise and I use the name stretching and there is an exercise called stretching now in the program. Yeah, uh, I would say very, uh, very lovely design. Uh... Yeah, I should have this app on my computer so I don't sit all the day. So. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, if there are any additional questions, we will definitely prepare those to, and send those to your coach. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. Thank you. The next team um, we're going to bring back in the Macau group, uh, WDYM team. When you're ready to present, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Ready? Okay. You may start in three, two, one, go. Hi, I'm Timothy. I will make a robot that sweep the floor. I want to make this robot because it is time to sweep by ourselves. And if there is a robot, it will be faster and easier. This robot can clean the things. I used motor with wheels to make it move and some more TV free parks to make it. The robot can be small or big. The robot shape is a boat. The program is for moving and if it meets an obstacle, it will turn to the other way. When it almost falls down to the table, it will go back up and turn the other way. And I use red tissues for this sweeping robots to clean the floor. There's a person on the boat because for decoration. 
It can use for everyone, especially for families. Mm. It is optional to me using electricity cleaning crew as well. Now start showing how it works. There's, there's some dust on the tissues and it works. It works too. Thank you for watching or listening to this speech. Do the judges have any questions? So uh, have you compared your uh, idea with, uh, with a Roomba, like a, a cleaner robot? Mm -hmm. Do you know there is a, there is a robot uh, for cleaning the floor? Um, you can buy it with a hundred, a few hundred dollars. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, uh, uh. so how do you compare your, uh, your idea with it? Or do you uh, learn something from that? Uh -huh. Um, um, excuse me, I can't hear that. Can you say again, please? So, uh, do you know there is a cleaner robot? Uh, and do you, uh, do you see um, so do you understand uh, uh, what's the working principle on that robot and what's the, uh, what's the idea on your robot? Uh, and is that the same? <laughs> mm, not really, because this robot can clean the, the table and it can clean wet or dry. <sighs> mm. Any Thank other you. questions? Okay, if there are any additional questions, we will email them to your coach. And then now we're going to bring in the final team, uh, team Madina Banat. I'll reset the timer for four minutes. Let me know when you're ready to start. Okay, we are ready. You ready? Okay. Ready. Perfect. You may begin. Three, two, one, go. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm engineer Ben Tahir Beck. And I'm engineer Sadim Adil Al Raddad. In 2019, there was a truck transport stone and sand, then she has stopped. It caused a collision with the car behind it. The stone and the sand fell on the driver on, uh, inside the car, and he died. So we think about covering the trucks like that. And after that, I received the damage goods, even though it had a fragile sign. So we think about piston car supply, then we thought of complaining them. Our project, electric piston for electric trucks. Our project is the development of a previous project about a truck with fixed piston that just to stop sand from flying and working with solar energy. 
but now it's not with electricity and it has a crystal cutter with a cord that moves up and down with two curved sensors. Uh, our, our project aims to solve the problem of carbon dioxide emission from burning truck fuel that will convert to electricity. And the other problem is truck can transport sand and stones and, and stones that cause accidents. And damage the goods due to the lack of stability during transportation and flying sand from the truck. The way we solve this problem by by using an electric piston, is cork supply keeps the goods stable and cover the truck. This is the first. Uh, this is the first truck model. It's about electric piston for uh, with cork that moves up and down with two first sensor. Uh, one to raise the piston and enter the goods. The other one to drop the piston according to the level of goods and keep it secure. We have published surveys and we concluded air pollution due to burning truck fuel and goods are damaged and sand flying is a continuing problem. Municipal alliance stores, shipping companies uh, and the society can all benefit from our project. This is the programming. This blocks close the door by pressing on the right button. Uh, and this blocks open the door in a secret way by pressing on the left button and turn the lock at an angle more than 180 degrees, less than 90 degrees, and more than 270 degrees. Uh, when the sensor connected to part F is pressed, the piston goes down. When the sensor connected to part D is pressed, the piston goes up. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Judges, do you have any questions? Yes, I have a question. Um, why did you think a piston would be the best reason to secure cargo? Because it's, uh, it, it's able to to go up and down. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the judges? Thank you so very much for the presentation. This concludes the team presentations. Okay, at this point, yeah, thank you so much teams. Thank you for your hard work. Uh, at this point, we're gonna try to do a full group picture. So, so we'd what? like uh, everyone in the audience to uh, turn on their video and come close to, to the camera. And yeah, we're gonna promote everyone to panelists. If you choose, if you would prefer not to be in the group photo, just leave your, your camera off but we're gonna promote everyone to panelists so we can get a really great group picture of all the teams and <laughs> So here they come. Oh, wonderful presentations today. Congratulations for all your hard work. All right, we'll give everyone a moment or two to, I'm going to turn off the camera for the um, timer. The timer. <laughs> there we go. All uh, right. All right. Do we have everyone, the team from Saudi, where'd they go? Uh, yeah, we may have lost them already. Let's, nope, they're here. Where are they? <laughs> uh, everyone.
everyone's breathing a little easier. Woo, it's done. Yes, it nice work. All right, so all the teams from Macau are in one location, all the teams in Hong Kong. Oh, there we go. We got them. I think we got them all. Yes. I don't, I think the Hong Kong and Macau teams logged off. Oh. Well, we got All them right. at the beginning, so. Yes, we did. Okay, Close very nice. Okay, we won't hold anybody up. Thank you so much. Um, Pam, go ahead and take your, give us the, the, the code for the camera. Give okay, us the... countdown, three, two, one, RoboFest. Yay. Robo okay, let, let me do one more, just in case somebody's eyes were closed. Okay, three, two, one, RoboFest. Oh, fantastic. I enjoyed today so much. All right. Thank you. Um, now, coaches, just please uh, be on the lookout for an email with uh, some follow-up questions. Um, if there are follow-up questions, I will ask you to confirm to make sure that you receive them. Um, the results will be uh, announced on um, October 2nd at the ROWC closing ceremonies. So please join us for that. And now we, we have some closing remarks from... Um, Dr. Chris Cartwright. Uh, hello, I'm Chris Cartwright, Director of RoboFest. Thank you so much for your participation in this online format of RoboFest competition using real robots. I'd like to thank all the coaches, mentors, parents, students, and judges. Special kudos to RoboFest staff, Shannon, Elmer, and Pam. I was impressed today by all the creative application of robotics to deliver medicine to the aging, fighting fires, taking care of plants, microbial fuel cells, assistive technology, helping the visually impaired, autonomous trains, washing and drying disabled people, keeping people safe from COVID, augmented reality games, cleaning surfaces, and safer truck delivery. Everyone deserves a round of applause. We'll see you all on October 2nd at the closing award, at the closing and award ceremony. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Thank you for hosting the exhibition. You're welcome. Thank You're you, welcome. everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, judges. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Good that was job. great. Great day. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Okay, they've been removed. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay. It was a lot of shuffling today. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I was really kind of. Okay. You want to turn off the uh, stop to Facebook? Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Facebook friends. <laughs>